This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create your own custom color palettes in Inkscape and save them to your installation so that you can load them up and work with them at any point in the future if you'd like. And if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Master Class. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over every tool and feature in Inkscape and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So to get us started here, as you can see, I have Inkscape opened up on my screen. And if you look down here to the bottom of the page, you'll notice we have this color palette that we normally work with in Inkscape. And if you click this little arrow icon over here to the bottom right, you'll get this little flyout menu with a bunch of different color palettes to choose from. Now by default, Inkscape has the Inkscape default palette here when you load it up. But you can choose from any of these other options here. Like for example, if you click on greens, it'll give you a wide spectrum of green shades to choose from in coloring your objects. And there's a whole bunch of different options in here if you want to check it out. You can look at something like Ubuntu here where this looks as if it's the uh, Ubuntu's uh, branding colors, so on and so forth. Now what you can do is you can actually create your own color palette and add it to this list using the technique I'm going to show you in this tutorial. So let me set this back to Inkscape default for now. And let me just set up the document here. I'm going to go to File, Document Properties, and I want to turn off the visibility of the page border for now. So where it says show page border, just deselect that for now. And I'm going to come up here to the grids tab and I'm going to add a new rectangular grid. Click on new. And where it says spacing X and spacing Y, I'm just going to change each of those to 100 so that there's 100 pixels of space between each grid line. Close out of that. We're going to go to view, zoom, zoom in at one to one so that we have a 100% view of the document here. And then finally, I'm going to open up the fill and stroke menu with this button up here, or you could press control shift and F on the keyboard. So what I'm going to do now is I'm basically just going to create a bunch of objects and color them all in with whatever shade I'd like to be included in my custom color palette that I'm going to load up in here. So I'm going to grab the squares and rectangles tool, and I'm going to create a square within these grid lines, and I'm going to color this in with a shade that I would like to save, maybe something like that. And I'm going to create another shade I would like to save. Maybe something like that. And then create something else. Maybe something like that. That's looking pretty good. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and I'm going to create a bunch of different objects. And I'm going to color them all in with colors that I like that I'd like to save to my custom color palette. Okay, so as you can see here, I've gone through and I've created a bunch of different squares and I've colored them in with colors that I'd like to save to my palette. Once I'm finished, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And then I'm going to come back to the uh, document properties by going to file document properties. And let's come back over to the page tab. And I'm going to turn the visibility of the page border back on. And I'm going to come over here to where it says resize page to content. I'm going to expand to that menu. And I'm going to click this button right here that says resize page to drawing or selection. And then we can close out of that menu. And that's going to do what that's going to do is it's going to make the document size fit the size of the graphic that we've created here. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to save this. I'm going to go to File, Save As. And for now, I'm just going to save this to my desktop. I'm going to give it whatever name I'd like the, the name of the color palette to be in this list when I bring it up. So I'm just going to, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to name this YouTube Palette. And I'm actually going to save this. I'm not going to save this as an SVG file. I'm going to save it as a .gpl file or a GIMP palette file. And I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Now let me close out of Inkscape here. Let me minimize this. What we have over here, I have this on my desktop. This is the GPL file. I'm going to open up a window. I'm actually going to open up a folder and go to wherever it is that you have your Inkscape, whatever drive that you have Inkscape installed on. For most of you, it's probably going to be your C drive. For me, I have it saved on my E drive. So I'm gonna open up the E drive. I'm gonna look for program files. I'm gonna to go to Inkscape, share, Inkscape, and palettes. And if you noticed here, we have an index of all of our color palettes that are included with our Inkscape installation. So I'm just going to take this YouTube palette.gpl and click and drag this into the folder. Go ahead and click continue to give it permission to do so. 
And all we have to do now is restart Inkscape. So let me come back up here. Let me close out of Inkscape. And let me just load it back up. Make it full screen. There we go. And let's click on this arrow again. And there you go, youtubepalette.gpl. If you click on that, there is our custom color palette based on those colors that I used in that previous document. You can now color this in however you'd like. So I think that should do it for today's tutorial. That is how you can go about creating your own custom color palettes in Inkscape and saving them so that you can work with them in the future. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.